World politics is in turmoil around inequality, immigration, race and religion. And this is never more evidenced than in America, the West's beacon of freedom and democracy. And here also, along with the rest of the world, past conventions are increasingly challenged. How might New Zealand react to the send her back politically motivated racist chant against American immigrant Elam Omar? It might be she is home. The president's agenda shapes as a watershed for America's founding principles and whether they can stand the test of time. But will mere words to denounce the racism be enough to stem the deepening divide? Or is a more tangible cause needed to restore America's democratic values? A cause that is inclusive of everyone, has an urgent societal need and is non-partisan. Few causes tick all three boxes. Two might be inequality and climate change. But a third convention I want to challenge is policing's failure to prevent crime and to propose its solution that I have tried to introduce to society for over 30 years. Crime costs society multi-billions of dollars and creates millions of innocent victims annually. Preventing crime and avoiding its allied victims is achievable. But like the problem itself, my voice echoes in the wells of silence. Fools, I said, you do not know, silence like a cancer grows. Are prophetic words in Simon and Garfunkel's Sound of Silence. And Lord was not ambiguous in labelling this silence as contributing to the 15th of March 2019 terrorist shootings in Christchurch, New Zealand, when she covered this song in simmering emotion with Marlon Williams at a memorial concert for its victims. I have no hesitation in linking my work to this as Lord was simply joining the dots and pointing to the silence. She could not have known that over 30 years before I had found a tangible way to overcome the silence by harnessing the same unity and inclusion demonstrated by New Zealand and the rest of the world after the terror event to prevent crime. Hello, my name is Kevin Boyle. I am the author of a book entitled Hit It With A Bigger Hammer that explains why it is impossible for policing to prevent crime. Society is unwitting of this and continues to rely on policing as its sole purveyor of expert crime prevention method and advice. But more importantly, the book also proposes its solution. The anomaly causes systemic failure in our criminal justice systems that require continuous tinkering with to redress overcrowded prisons, congested criminal courts, ever-stretched policing resources and a myriad of unnecessary innocent victims of crime. I have named my solution the Responsibility Contract. It is proposed to renegotiate the existing social contract that provides policing responsibility for crime prevention, with society reclaiming that responsibility in collaboration with policing. The responsibility contract breaks the criminal code of silence around offending, allowing for its successful intervention and prevention at its source. Leading law enforcement agencies globally, including the FBI and CIA in America, have tried but failed to break the criminal code of silence. And there is a very good reason for this. It is because the code of silence is caused by law enforcement, or more accurately, the punitive consequence attached to reporting offending to law enforcement. Policing cannot be the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff, as well as the fence at the top. They are opposing ideologies requiring different elements that can't be performed together. They seek opposing outcomes one to detect and prosecute crime, and the other to prevent it. Once this is understood, we just need to join the dots to what Lord and the rest of the world is telling us in relation to the terror events themselves. Silence enables them, and the unity and inclusion shown in the aftermath can break the silence to prevent them. The type of inclusion policing cannot achieve because its enforcement role is necessarily exclusive. The dots can also be joined to Jacinda Ardern's Remembrance Day speech to honour its victims. 
Each of us has work to do, but don't leave it to the government alone. We each hold the power in our words and in our actions. New Zealand can be the nation that discovers the cure. Let this be the legacy of 15 March 2019. I agree, except we already have the cure, and all we need to do is adopt this crime prevention solution as an unintended consequence of the Christchurch shooter that we can universally celebrate, if not in his name, then in his cowardly act. So far, I have referred only to terrorism, but the responsibility contract holistically embraces all criminal offending and threats, from schoolyard bullying to terrorism. It substitutes enforcement with prevention as a first response to offending. It overcomes the code of silence that protects offenders who can no longer discourage informers with intimidatory threat. It erases the social stigma of being identified as a narc or whistleblower. The responsibility contract provides direct access to the coalface knowledge of offending needed to prevent crime. Presently, policing attempts to access this knowledge by covert spy and surveillance methods, which is polarizing and inexact science and can be unreliable. By coveting the crime prevention role, policing unwittingly obstructs new answers being found. I won't go into how I discovered and researched policing's inability to prevent crime. It is all explained in my book and in my videos linked to my website. It began from a policing and private security management background in commerce, where the obvious lack of prevention outcomes culminated in my challenging the method and founding this solution to save the company it was employed in multi-millions of dollars over a five-year period. What I want to focus on here is how the responsibility contract can now be adopted by society to provide safer and healthier workplaces and sporting environments. I had no idea when I founded this solution that it would have the potential to prevent every threat of offending at every level of any organisation or entity. But this is a logical conclusion because it remedies an international failed best practice. The practice was transported into commerce from policing in the 1950s and into sport since 2000 and thereafter into every area of society to prevent offending, including schools to prevent bullying and into the home to prevent child smacking and family violence and it permeates all compliance management circumstances, including security management, integrity units, audit, human resources, health and safety, and mental well-being management. If you are a manager in the private or public sector, or an administrator in sport frustrated by ongoing offending in your organization, or you are an athlete, or an employee who is disadvantaged by others offending, or you are at risk of being drawn into corruption, you can prevent it by adopting the solution rather than being potentially criminalised by the existing best practice. Although lawmakers will be major beneficiaries of this solution, they resist accepting that policing cannot prevent crime and the change required. And because business leaders take their lead from lawmakers, it is difficult to affect change from the top down. Notwithstanding, this solution belongs to you and it cannot be implemented without your belief and your agreement. This is your opportunity to show intolerance of offending in a tangible way and not just leave it to our lawmakers and business leaders who themselves are not immune from offending. It can be introduced by them or by you telling your employer that you want to adopt the responsibility contract to protect yourselves in your workplace. You can prevent offending that impacts on you and other innocent victims or brings your sport or organisation into disrepute. You can avoid becoming a victim and prevent offenders from punitive consequences and harming their future prospects. Or in general, you can help provide safer work and sporting environments for the health and well-being of everyone. The responsibility contract provides an agreed process that offenders can be warned against offending instead of reporting them as a first response to invoke a punitive consequence. It provides agreement that intervention will be undertaken by those with knowledge of offending and the intervention will be accepted by the offender in the event 
a warning is not heeded, it is agreed that the offending can be formally reported. This overcomes the code of silence that currently protects the offender and the social stigma attached to reporting, as the offender agreed to this contract at a time when there was no intention to offend. The responsibility contract can be incorporated into any employment contract governing agreed conditions between an employer and employee. Adoption in these controlled environments would allow its due diligence for wider application. This pathway appropriately reverses the faulted practices transfer into commerce in the 1950s and later into sport. State services and state-owned enterprises are equally governed by employment contracts that together with commerce and sport represent the greater, the greater mass of society and therefore the greatest knowledge of offending within those environments and also the public domain. Intolerance of offending in the workplace would naturally flow into the public domain to help prevent drink and drug driving, social welfare abuse, family violence and schoolyard bullying where the contract could equally be embraced. These outcomes are not exhaustive as the solution would have a myriad of applications not proposed here to universally address all threats at all levels. The mental well-being of victims of crime and the well-being of employees being drawn in corruption are also emerging risks as well as potential liabilities for employers who do not do all they can to prevent it. The new Bribery Act in Britain is an example where employers are liable if their employees are drawn into corruption and the employer is deemed not to have done all it can to prevent it. This opens Pandora's box of legal uncertainty for those employing security management. Health and safety is another compliance area that would benefit from the responsibility contract to prevent breaches of its legal provisions. Employers and employees are equally at risk and both would benefit from overcoming the code of silence to prevent breaches and provide safer work environments. The responsibility contract is commercially viable under copyright license to ensure its uniform application and formal collaboration with policing. Partnerships could be considered but would need to be synergistic with the responsibility contract's intent and purpose. For example, policing collaborates globally with the private enterprise Crime Stoppers and whilst its name suggests prevention, like policing, it does not prevent crime. Crime Stoppers would considerably enhance its prevention purpose and value with the solution. And it would in turn provide the solution with existing global presence and reach. The broken windows policy of New York policing in the 1980s was successful because it invoked policing's intolerance of minor crime that manifested in a reduction of more serious crime. It only failed because of the increasing need and costs to employ more and more policing. The responsibility contract invokes a societal intolerance to all crime at no cost. New Zealand's Royal Commission of Inquiry into the Christchurch shootings and the inquiry into the failings of our justice system would benefit from considering this solution. Presently, the only tool in the toolbox is more policing that does not prevent offending. The responsibility contract can enhance policing's ability to fight crime. It can unite everyone in that fight, including all religious groups and organisations that foment extremism. In Ireland recently, it took the young IRA shooting of a young woman to bring the Catholic and Presbyterian communities together to ask why it took such an event to unify them, a question that was emphatically answered with a standing ovation that reinforced unity as the answer. In Sri Lanka, Christians, Buddhists and Muslims united in the wake of a recent terror event to deter retaliatory attacks. In Christchurch, Muslim and all other communities in New Zealand and around the world united to condemn the attack. The unity and inclusion were palpable, but it has since waned in the absence of a unified cause that can harness it in a tangible way. Knowledge of the Christchurch shooters' activities and intentions existed prior to the event, either directly or indirectly amongst family, friends, associates, or peripheral contacts and observers who were inhibited by the code of silence. Policing cannot access that knowledge, but the responsibility contract can, by including those with the knowledge. 
Gun control measures are a positive deterrent, but alone will not prevent mass shootings. New Zealand can be the nation to discover the cure, not only to terror events, but to all crime. The Muslim community in New Zealand, together with all New Zealanders, can keep alive the unity and inclusion shown after the Christchurch attack by adopting the responsibility contract to demonstrate how intervention can help prevent further attacks. New Zealand has the benefit of being a younger nation that is not yet fully immersed in the problems experienced by the rest of the world around immigration. We have the opportunity to avoid past mistakes by uniting diverse peoples, religions, religions and cultures in a common purpose to prevent terrorism and all crime. We just need to join the dots. The recent shootings in Texas and Ohio, one of which was linked to Christchurch, reflected the increasing politically stimulated divisions in America that will be difficult to remedy with words alone. The American Constitution frustrates the adoption of effective gun controls, and alternative solutions are not in abundance. And whilst gun controls are a positive deterrent, they alone do not prevent mass shootings. The responsibility contract is such an alternative solution that can unite everyone in a common cause against terror and all crime to subdue the fear and claw back multi-billions of dollars in the black economies and avoid countless unnecessary innocent victims. Although outwardly courageous, the world is gripped by siege mentality, where extra policing and burgeoning private security, surveillance, barriers and walls are endemic and dictated by criminals. This is clear evidence of a criminal minority prevailing over the law-abiding majority. And this can now be reversed by giving the majority a voice under the responsibility contract. 30 years ago, this solution might have been before its time. But today, it is even more relevant as crime has not only significantly increased, it is increasingly serious and violent. Also, society of today is more willing to challenge past conventions that don't work. I cannot do this alone. All I can do is expose the problem and propose its remedy. You can start by liking and sharing this on all social media platforms or by contacting me through my website. Thank you for listening. <music>